Hey guys, so um, I got a lot of questions after uh, uh, one of my previous videos I posted when I showed you guys the the setup that I was going to use for the Future Forestry Tour. Um, a lot of you asked me about the computer setup, and so I wanted to show you how I do it. So this is main stage right here. This is the software that I used live to um, play our backing tracks, play the click tracks that we hear in our ears, to do my keyboard parts and um, also send a MIDI signal to my looper that kept it synced up to the click track so that I could do live looping in time with the rest of the band and with the click and also sending MIDI signals to my timeline delay pedal to automatically change patches and presets when I switch songs on here. So um, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of the basics of main stage because there's a ton of other videos to do that. The, uh, the main things I want to show you are the MIDI stuff that I did, so the, the clock signal and uh, the patch changes on the, on the delay pedal. Um, but the main problem I want to tell you about and the main problem that I had to solve um, was the fact that, um, and hopefully you're familiar with the way backing and click tracks work, usually you have a stereo file and uh, you've got the click or whichever, you've got the click panned maybe hard left and the, the backing track panned hard right. And so what this enables you to do is you can have one file, one stereo track, and you can be playing that, but at a, on a mixer or whatever, you can um, mix the click and the, the backing track differently. So you can maybe send just the, the click to your ears or to your monitors and send the track to the house um, and they'll still stay in sync because they're the same track. So, um, my main problem was, uh, I received those tracks from Eric, uh, the singer of the band. Um, he gave me a track that had the click and the backing track, and I had to figure out a way to, to do live looping on top of that and stay perfectly in sync with it. So, um, the way I figured out how to do it I guess one way I could have done it, which I didn't trust, is to figure out the tempo of the song, plug that into main stage, um, play the backing track, and just hope that a main stage uh, the click was synced up with uh, with, with the clock signal. Um, they were being generated separately, um, and even though they were the same tempo, I I just didn't trust that the ones the beats would be landing at the same place. Um, so I'll show you how I how I figured out a way to get around it and assure myself that I would be in sync with the with the track. So first thing to know is that um well I'll show you I imported these tracks into Logic. And so this is a song called Chariots. This is the one I'm gonna use as the example. Um this file right here, actually these are both the same, is is the backing track and the click track. So um, you can see on the top, those, those little clicks are the click. And on the bottom, that's the track. So the top is the left signal, and the bottom is the right. And so what I did here, actually, is I split this out into two separate tracks. I just duplicated it. You can see that this one is panned hard left. This one is panned hard right. So this one is only, you're only going to hear uh, the click. So I'll make sure just that track is soloed. You can hear that. Logic's click is still on, but so that's just the click. Um, and the backing track sounds like this. You're not gonna hear anything for a second. So there's just some little stuff going on there. And then together, it sounds like that. The click is in your left ear, and the track is in your right ear. So the only reason I did that for this song was because later. You can see over here I had to do a little edit on just the click and I didn't want to screw with the track so separating them out like that and then rebouncing it to back down to a stereo wave file um, was how I did that. And so the thing to note about Logic is that um, when you bounce a wave file it preserves and embeds uh, tempo information in the wave file that main stage can read. So um, I knew that this song was at 144, that was what I was given. And so I pulled it into Logic, changed Logic's tempo to 144, and you can verify that it's the correct tempo 
by checking like this. So you can hear Logic's click is synced up with the, the click in the track. So that's good. Um, since, since I'm going to be looping in this song, I need to have that tempo information embedded. So we will, uh, just so you know, this track is the one enabled so you can hear me talk. So pretend that's not there. Um, these two uh, have them soloed and then bounce it. I'm not going to actually do it, but so you bounce a WAV file. It doesn't say anything about that it's embedding tempo information, it just does. So you can bounce that to wherever you want. And then from there, we go back to main stage. And uh, <clears throat> this is the backing track. No, this one. This is a little transition track. I'll show you in a second. This is the backing track. So um, this is the playback plugin in Logic that that handles playing back audio. And so you can see here I've chosen, um, it's called Cherry, it's better click because after I edited the click, it was better. So I just uh, brought in the WAV file there. And the thing to note, the very important thing is that sync is on and we're snapping to a beat. So what those two things do is it says, well, the other thing to note is that for this patch, uh, the attributes has a tempo of 144. So that's, that's the tempo of the song. Um, so what's actually happening here is that um, main stage is, is stretching this wave file to fit into a 144 tempo. Now it's already at 144, but what it does is it just ensures that each beat um, is going to snap to the beat that Logic is sending out. If that, I hope that makes sense. So Logic has its own metronome. So, so you can hear Logic's metronome, hopefully it's panned center, and you can hear this click, which is panned left, and they're still syncing up. So hopefully that convinces you that they are synced up. And like I said before, maybe it would have worked to just not worry about the tempo information and just import the straight file that, that I was given. Um, but this just makes me feel a lot better. Um, so, and uh, to, to show you, now that, now that I know that main stage is synced up with the click from the track, um, I can do some other things. So this track is the track that is sending out clock information. So you can see here I've got two MIDI tracks. One of them is going out of the A output of my MIDI interface, and the other one is going out of the B. So these are completely separate MIDI um, cables, outputs, um, whatever. So if I go to this clock one, you go click on the track, and then you go to the MIDI output tab here. You can see that it's sending a program change. It doesn't need to be doing that. It was because I copied tracks. But I have this box checked called Start Sending MIDI Clock. And just to verify and prove to you that it's actually happening, I have MIDI Monitor running. So it's you can see that it's sending clock information to both the A and the B MIDI channels. Um, if, if I could show you the looper pedal, you should, at this point, you would see that it is receiving a MIDI clock because the uh, there's an LED that blinks in tempo with the song. Um, the second one here is the timeline. That's so uh, output B is hooked up to my delay pedal, and this is the one that I am sending a program change, and I'm also sending the MIDI clock. So it's saying uh, change to program six, which is the delay setting for this song, and also send MIDI clock so that. Um, I mean, I had it preset for the right tempo, but if for some reason something went wrong, the clock is being sent and the delay pedal will stay uh, in time. So, um, in terms of the, the MIDI stuff, that's pretty much it. Um, I have main stage set up so that I just have one button that switches between uh, um, settings or patches here. And um, so what will happen is, so say we um, had just finished this song, I will hit the move forward button on my keyboard, like that. Oh, the metronome is still on, that's usually off. Um, 
So you can see this little transition track started playing. This is when we would be like changing a bunch of instruments and getting things ready for the song. Um, but once that's over, I can press play on my keyboard. Like that. And it starts the real track. Usually we would wait a little longer than this. So um, that's how it works. And as soon as I changed the patch there, um, that program change message got sent, so my delay pedal changed, and my um, my looper started receiving a new tempo. Um, so, for example, I don't even think there's any MIDI going. No, there is. This song I looped too. So there's a different timeline setting. There's a different program change. Um, different preset came up, and and the clock the same as before. But you'll notice that this patch has a tempo of 110. So as soon as I switch to chariots, all of a sudden I am getting a tempo or a clock of 144. So, and uh, I mean, just some other things to show you here, I guess. Um, I do, there are certain tracks where I have a keyboard going. This is one of them. So that's this one. Um, and you can hear that hopefully. That was the little part I had to play for this song, and not all of them have that. Um, this one didn't have one, so you can see there's not a layer. That's that's really for if I do the keyboard, there's nothing coming out. So um, that is set up per patch, so I don't have to do any manual switching for that. Um, I think that's pretty much it for what I wanted to show. So. Um, Adding a MIDI track is as easy as just going to this plus button and you say add external instrument. And you choose the MIDI output and then you're good to go and you choose those tabs, tell it what you want it to do. If for some reason any of you Apple people, any of you who work at Apple are watching this, um, the next thing you need to do is add the ability to send program changes within the middle of a song. Currently, you can only send it right when the patch change happens. I would love to be able to send another one, you know, right when the chorus starts or right when the verse starts to change other uh, external instruments. So hopefully that's coming soon. That would be awesome. Uh, I think that's it. So uh, if you've got any questions, let me know. I wish I could have shown you the settings changing on my delay pedal and the little light blinking on my looper, but you have to trust me that it actually works. So. Um, yeah, that's all for now. If you've got any questions, let me know. I can make another video if you do want more basic main stage um, knowledge. I can do that. So hope that was helpful, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.